Hey y'all, so it's really been a while since I've done one of these. <laughs> and my allergies already are, are, they're horrible. They're absolutely ridiculously horrible. So, yes. Hello, hello. I have not done one of these wrap ups in a while because of the break that I took. So I'm a little behind on reviewing the books that I've been reading lately. And what I'm going to do with this one is I am going to review as quickly as possible because it is a lot of content and I don't want this video to be super, super long, mainly because I don't feel like sitting down and editing a two hour long video. And I know y'all are not out here trying to watch a two hour long video. So we're going to keep it quick and, and, and nicely wrapped up as much as possible here. I'm just going to give you my general thoughts on the books that I have read. As always, like I said, um, I don't review the picture books within these weekly wrap ups. I also don't review the graphic novels, manga or comics that I end up reading. So I'm just going to go ahead and list out the things that I ended up reading. So let's start with the picture books. The first is Dear Muslim Child, Climbing the Volcano, Seeds of Change, Miles of Style, Pepper and Me, 10 Things I Love About Dinosaurs, Lola and the Troll, Jimmy's Rhythm and Blues, My Mother's Tongue, I Lived Inside a Whale, which was one of the favorite, like the best picture books that I've read in the past couple weeks. It was absolutely marvelous. The Ocean Gardener, Fighting with Love, Hair Oil Magic, Ride Beside Me, Not Yet, The Story of an Unstoppable Skater, A Cup of Love, One Sweet Song, Nana in the Country, Only the Bird Who Liked Being Alone, Soul Food, A Flicker of Hope, A Story of Migration, Jump for Joy, Sydney's Big Speech, Karabu, a silly, a silly South Indian folktale, Tomorrow's Lily, which was super, super depressing. I Do Not Eat Children, Jam 2. And then the final one I read was Taxi Go. In terms of the graphic novels that I've read, I read a, just a couple. Thought I read more than that, but I only read three. The first one being Day of Living Live, The Adventures of Invisible Boy, and Wild Fool, which the illustrations in that were absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so we have quite a few books to wrap up. Like I said, I want to do this as quickly as possible. So I'm not, not to say that you won't get an in-depth explanation, but I'm not going to spend as long on each book just because of the fact that it, y'all, it would take me forever. <laughs> it would take me forever. So I'm, and a lot of these also, I'm not going to lie to y'all, I'm pulling up my list. That's why I'm looking down. A lot of these I still haven't gotten around to reviewing. It's just been super hectic. I'm working full time and part time right now. And it's just my life is a little bit crazy right now. And so yeah, we're just gonna go we're gonna go with it here. Okay, so the first one that I have is I hope this doesn't find you. This is a YA contemporary book. I had been meaning to read some of this author's work last year. I can't remember the, the title of the book that they released last year, but this one follows a main character who is like super on it academic wise and is brilliant and then something goes left where she uses which I thought this was very interesting so essentially what she does is whenever she gets frustrated with teachers or she gets frustrated with her peers she writes these emails as like drafts to kind of go basically go back and deal with her her issues she never really sends the emails at all but unfortunately something goes wrong when she is walking away from her laptop and she notices when she comes back that something about her laptop is off but she couldn't tell what what it was so essentially all of her emails get sent out so all of those emails that were in her drafts all of them go out to all the people that she's taken particular issues with i think that one of the things that i really enjoyed about this one is it is an ode to anyone who constantly feels like they have to be perfect or they constantly have to seek validation. At least with our um, main female character, she, Sadie, she constantly feels the need to be perfect, especially when it comes to um, academics. She looks for validation within her academics. And so she's a people pleaser, essentially. And I have been in that place and sometimes I still struggle with this whole concept idea of being a people pleaser and not really saying like what's on your mind and how you feel about certain things. Things. And when certain things like piss you off, 
and you need to confront people about it she struggles with that and i understand what it's like to be in that place and of course the one person that supports her throughout this whole entire situation is her nemesis and um they have such a unique chemistry their banter is really really good i will say this one is not for people who are looking for more of a slow burn it's clear that the two have an attraction to each other and that a relationship is going to develop but it does take a huge chunk of time through the course of the novel for them to kind of figure that that they you know may want to pursue something beyond just what they've used to be but if you like that kind of like nemesis to kind of friends to lovers type of vibe then i think that you would appreciate this one the writing in this one was truly poetic I, this is my first time picking up this author's works and i definitely will pick up more it was beautifully done and i think that the content in it is not only relatable i think to someone like me who's older but most importantly it's relatable to teens who are reading these books which y'all know when it comes to ya i am very much so it's got to be about the teens like yes I'm an adult that reads YA but I want to be able to pick up a YA book and as a librarian think about like would a teen audience be uh re be receiving of of a book like this would they enjoy it would they see themselves in it is it you know capturing experiences that can you know reflect the everyday teen life and of course it's not going to be the reflection of every teen's life but I think that that's what's most important I think that she does a really really good job at this the whole idea of the emails being sent and her world kind of being flipped upside down and that this facade that she completely created is basically crumbling to to, to absolute bliss <laughs> I mean not bliss it's crumbling to hell honestly I don't know why I said bliss it's interesting watching her um, in particular develop as a character and learn that she doesn't have to be perfect she doesn't have to seek validation and that it's okay to show emotion outside of being accepting of everything that is thrown at you especially when it makes you feel uncomfortable when you feel like you're being taken advantage of so I I do appreciate that I really I love that I love that aspect of it so I'm going to give that one 4.5 stars I think that my issue that I had with this one is, like I said, I love the banter. I love the relationship development. I don't have an issue with slow burn, but I think we don't really get to see enough of their relationship because by the time we get to see the, develop the development of the relationship to really get to see it blossom, we're kind of coming up on the close of the novel. So that's my only hiccup about that one. The next one I read was a middle grade novel. This was by Natalie D. Richards, who is often known for the books that she writes um, for a young adult audience, which is typically thrillers. This one wasn't necessarily, a, it had thriller vibes, but for a middle grade book, I would say it was more like mystery, survival stories, because the book is called 15 Secrets to Survival. So when we step into the, the introduction of this book, we're meeting a cast of characters who are supposed to be friends. <laughs> But they're not really friends. They're on this like quiz bowl quiz team type of thing and they have a complete meltdown during competition and their parents are shocked and appalled about how much conflict exists between this group because they essentially thought that okay well they've known each other for so long they get along so well and so it kind of caught them off guard. So one of the, our main characters his parents decide to send them on this like adventure survival type of thing to help them kind of build some camaraderie and help their teamwork and help with just their outdoor skills and <laughs> it goes left very very quickly so they're set into the wilderness and it's um the main character's uncle and he sets them out and gives them these clues and everything and they're supposed to be able to figure out the clues as they get to the wilderness and find him and find his baby sister it's very interesting however there's something that happens that really puts them in some danger not danger and because this, this is for a middle grade audience is not danger in the sense where a reader would be scared by it but they are dealing with the natural elements they do have to use some serious survival skill tips everything that they know what they've been taught in school what they've been taught out of school so what i did appreciate about this one is that it definitely focuses on rebuilding friendship and dealing with interpersonal conflict which is really really great for that audience because still here we're learning how to deal with our emotions we're going through a lot of changes puberty and so being able to handle your emotions is still tricky I mean adults still have issues handling their emotions it is it's a tr tricky little thing to navigate there but I think that they 
definitely learn how to depend upon one each other and learn how to recognize their strengths and weaknesses as individuals and their strengths and weaknesses as a group. I think what I did enjoy about this one was like these tidbits of information about actually being in the wilderness and it had its own like survival guide kind of woven into the framework. So it was a fictional story but there were pieces of the narrative that were actually true that can be used for those who are interested in nature who like to go camp camping, outdoor hiking, whatever. And these are skills that you should keep in mind whenever you're outdoors, uh, family, friends, alone, however the case may be. I am not really an outdoorsy wilderness type of person. I read this for a particular reason, which I can't really discuss right now. It has nothing to do with this channel. <laughs> if anybody's like, oh, is it another? Not a project for this channel, it's for something else. And I, so it was kind of a requirement for, for me to read this. And so I thought it was well written. I thought it was interesting. I think this is great for middle grade readers who like adventure, who like outdoorsy type stuff, who like their books that have a little mystery slash thriller twist to them, especially geared towards a younger audience. But for me, it was just a solid read. I think that this was my first time reading Natalie's books, even though I'm familiar with her as an author. And I ended up giving that one four out of five stars. The next one that I ended up reading is another middle grade book, but this is kind of on the lower end and of middle grade it's shorter this is called dancing in the storm i was really looking forward to this one it's a 2024 new release this one focuses on a main character who does gymnastics as you all know my daughter is currently in gymnastics and so just out of interest in what she's doing in class right now and like just what i see i've been reading some gymnastics stuff it's just feel like one of those parents when your child gets involved in a certain activity or sport now you want to do all the research and reading about it uh, this is a fictional story that focuses on a main character who lives in louisiana and she's in gymnastics and she is in competitive gymnastics and she's about to gear up for her next competition until she accidentally um she falls and she hits her shoulder and then she ends up getting this knot like right here on her shoulder blade and it just doesn't go away and she wakes up in the middle of the night and she is feeling horrible and so her mom goes to go check her shoulder and she realizes that her skin is hot to the touch and so she immediately takes her to the pediatrician the pediatrician looks at it and is kind of nervous about what's going on and so he sends her to a geneticist and they figure out that she has fop i'm not going to try to say it because as much as i <laughs> would try to pronounce this I know like I'm not good with scientific names y'all and I would completely butcher this I promise you I've listened to it tons and tons of time and I still cannot pronounce this right but the short um, acronym for it is FOP and essentially what it is it's a rare genetic disorder where you start to get bone growth in areas where they're supposed to be like muscle and ligament and a lot of that is due to any type of like that fall that she took so any type of hard um, trauma to the body is what will trigger it to flare up and so as a result of course she's not allowed to do gymnastics anymore because that's what started she's already had it in terms of her like genetic makeup but that trauma on her body is what caused that first flare up and so they don't recommend her doing any type of like sports that have like heavy body contact and the only thing that's recommended for her to do is swimming so she loves gymnastics unfortunately it's hard on her emotionally and mentally because she can't do gymnastics anymore and she starts to face a lot of different issues not only is she trying to come to terms with this fact that she has a genetic disorder that is going to progressively get worse and she doesn't know when it's going to get worse but also it's this kind of fear of being able to like to tell her friends there's a parent who has a very disgusting reaction to it and in terms of basically pushing her out of another thing that she was doing i don't want to give too much away because i do think it's kind of a spoiler then there's the family dynamic with her parents having to understand now at some point someone may have to like stop working full-time in order to become a, a full-time caretaker for her and then on top of that her brother is having difficulty adjusting to the fact that now his parents have kind of taken their full-time attention away from both of them like splitting it between both of them and it's primarily focused on her which i think she carries a little guilt about because she knows that they've been so immersed in doing research about her her condition what it's going to mean for them as a family that he kind of gets pushed to the back burner and so i think that the author did a wonderful job addressing that and this i should say is co-written so everything that we're seeing here in terms of the representation of fop is coming from the perspective of someone that does have fop so they wrote this book together 
and I think that you'll see a lot of great tidbits of what this whole entire experience has been like for Amy. Um, with our main character, she does connect with an older person who has FOP, which I think is really, really great because she gets to kind of see like, okay, well, I'm young now. I am struggling a little bit. I'm having, you know, small flare ups, but what is it going to be like as I get older? And so to interact with this other character that's in their 30s, that's had FOP, that's got diagnosed at a young age she can kind of see like you know the ups and downs of having this disorder and what does that mean for her in the future and how has this adult been living their life dealing with this disorder I just thought this one was really really great y'all um it was completely unexpected kind of under the radar I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this one but I ended up giving it four out of five stars the next one that I ended up reading was hot for teacher and I believe I talked about this one the last time I did a wrap-up I was in the middle of reading this one and I actually ended up finishing it. This follows a main character who has been single for a while. She's a single mother and she hasn't really been going past the dating phase with people because she's just nervous to make that commitment and she's kind of just held back and so her sister's like oh no we're gonna get you out there you're gonna start dating as a matter of fact you're gonna have a one night stand and so she sets up this whole entire thing for their brother to take her son and um spend some time with him and they go out to a restaurant slash bar and they are just gonna kind of wing it <laughs> that's the plan they're like we're just gonna wing it she ends up meeting this guy and they have instant chemistry. One night stand happens and then they're like, okay, cool. We're going to go our separate ways. Except when she goes to her son's open house because he's supposed to be getting a new teacher for, I think he's in third grade. He's supposed to be getting a new teacher because the teacher that he originally had ended up getting a different opportunity. So she left. And so it's kind of a surprise on who the new teacher is going to be. So they go and when she walks into the classroom, guess who it is? <laughs> It is the guy that she had a one night stand with. So that creates some interesting dynamic between the two of them. I really liked the energy of this one at first. That was my biggest hiccup with this one is that I thought it was like really catchy. I liked the premise. The writing was really, really good. I thought that the energy between the two characters was good. But somewhere along the way, the pacing got thrown off and I can't really pinpoint where it was I just knew I got to a point in the book where it started to feel slower than it did before and honestly I think I can attribute that to the fact that I, their relationship was strange to me and that it never felt fully developed it went from one night stand to oh my god you're my child's teacher to oh my god I love you and so part of me was like well did I miss something like did I skip some pages and so that right there that kind of like whiplash threw me off the pacing slowed down and then I was just like yeah I don't feel as invested in the relationship as I did before so strong start but definitely fizzled out towards the end it's not a bad book it's a three star read it was a solid read I just think that there were some pacing issues in this one but it had just all of the ingredients for a great romance type of situation going on here I will say I'm very interested in seeing what she's going to do with the following books because this is supposed to be the first and what I think is going to be a trilogy where each one of the siblings is going to get their own book which I'm fingers crossed I'm hoping I'm hoping for that but I think that if Fisher had dedicated just a little bit more time to the development of their romance and this book I'd never really I don't say this often but this is one of those books that could have afforded to be a little bit longer and not like a hundred pages but maybe like an extra 50 pages just seeing their relationship pick up some momentum and then we get to that big like I really love you I care about you moment but we didn't really get that so it just it didn't feel right to me in a lot of ways but it, yeah like I said pacing issues aside I am interested in picking up the books about the siblings and I gave that one three stars okay so this next one is another really strange one <laughs> I ended up picking up it is the bravest warrior in Nefaria by Adi Alsed Alsed I'm probably saying um his last name wrong this was strange it was strange and interesting it's a middle grade fantasy but very whimsical in the sense that it gave me Lewis Carroll, Roa Dahl like literary nonsense vibes. <laughs> like really, really, really strange premise where there's this world called Nefaria and these people are used to like wicked plots and schemes. They're used to people like just being crappy people and 
At the time of this book, we meet our main character, Bobart, who finds himself at the center of this evil scheme and plot, where this wizard named Max is trying to build his own army of children by cursing a gumball machine. And he wants to build his own army of children so he can take over because he doesn't think that they will actually fight back against children, which look, he's kind of ingenious. Um, I think that... <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting to me because it's like I I'm so I'm so kind of like stuck in this space of I don't know how to feel about this one but it created some sense of comfort like this took me back to some of the whimsical weird things that I read as a child which gave me some level of comfort which is strange to me and like I said the whole idea of like Max using these kids to build an army was very interesting I do like that Bobart is in this kind of phase mentally in the beginning where he's like oh well my classmates don't see me that's the whole thing is like nobody can see me but when you get to the end this whole concept of being seen and seeing others I think is very interesting and I don't want to spoil it because it kind of threw me for a loop because I wasn't expecting that so him this high idea of him not seeing not being seen um, and then this contrasting idea of not seeing others is it comes full circle towards the end of the book, which I think is an important thing to pay attention to. This book, unfortunately, was very slow. Um, it was it was it was slow <laughs> and it was slow because for something that you think would have a lot of fast paced action considering like it's a middle grade fantasy we have like this whim whimsical a literally nonsense type of vibe going on you would think like okay this book would be like this you know this guy's trying to build this army and it wasn't <laughs> it really wasn't it was really really slow and so at some points I was kind of like yeah this is kind of boring <laughs> um and y'all know me I love a fast paced plot I need something that's going to draw me in I thought the character development was done well I thought that um the world building was done well but that plot man I was like okay so when when is something going to happen it just felt like it took forever for something to happen and I did not like that at all so there so there's that I still ended up giving it a 3.5 stars because it I don't know it's weird I don't know if y'all ever had one of those books where you're like yeah um I'm not sure whether I like it or whether I don't like it but I feel some sense of comfort and familiarity with it it's a very strange book <laughs> not one that I would have picked up on my own but it's it's a strange book and I'm I'm glad I read it to have had the experience but yeah 3.5 stars. Oh my friends I finally read Axie O's book XOXO. This took me forever to read. I know that a lot of people love this book. This It's not the second book. It's a companion book that follows a character from XOXO just came out. I can't remember the name of that book right now but it is out. The companion book is out and I wanted to read it and I was like okay yeah well let me go back and read XOXO. I had an audio copy of it on Libro FM so I was like okay yeah just go ahead and listen to it. This is this was a solid book. It was four stars. I think people loved it more than I did. I wasn't completely like blown away. I was invested and intrigued by it the entire time. It follows a main character who ends up having to go to Korea because of her ailing grandmother um, and her mother her and her mother decide to go and she is a gifted musician and she's able to transfer the way that the school differences work between where she's at and in um, South Korea she's able to transfer and not really join in the middle of their school term I don't know how to explain it because I'm not really clear on how how like school terms work in South Korea but the way that it happened she was able to kind of seamlessly go over there when she well prior I should start this all over because that's <laughs> that's an important piece of the puzzle prior to her actually getting to South Korea she meets this guy and they have you know chemistry or whatever she doesn't know who he is at all and I don't know, I want to go back and look at the summary because I'm not sure if this is necessarily a spoiler or not. And I don't want to spoil it because I just want to make, yeah, okay, it's not a spoiler. So she, she originally meets this guy and they, they get along well enough. And when she's about to go to South Korea with her mom to help take care of the ailing grandmother, 
she is basically telling him like, oh yeah, you know, I'm going to be in South Korea, not realizing that he is the star in a K-pop group. Now, I don't listen to K-pop. I'm not a part of like K-pop, like I don't want to call it a fandom. I don't know. I don't even know. Like, I feel like I'm getting old here because I don't even know the terminology. But I don't listen to K-pop. Um, this is one of the... This is not the first book I've read with, like, a K-pop theme to it. I'm pretty sure it's not. But I always find these to be quite interesting because... I mean, you have a main character who pretty much has been concealing his identity because doesn't want you to know that he's a part of a boy band. And when you get overseas, you find out... And it's it's an interesting journey for her because he wants to keep and it kind of pissed me off until I realized what he was doing because at first he was like oh yeah I want to keep our relationship secret I was like you want to what <laughs> like but it makes sense in the grand scheme of things because there's a conflict that happens in an with another band member that I don't want to talk about because that is kind of a spoiler and so he wants to make sure that their relationship dynamic is not kind of messed up in the same way. I know that seems really obscure and probably doesn't make enough sense, but if you read it, you'll get exactly where I'm coming from. And so it really is about them not necessarily rekindling, rekindling their relationship, but her kind of being immersed in his world and trying to figure out how to navigate any type of relationship that they want to have with her trying to focus on what she wants to do with her own personal career and what he wants to do with his career. And I think that what got me to the point where I was like, you know, this is definitely a solid book. I could see myself giving this four stars is that there were some very interesting themes kind of tackled. So we have this idea of, of separation and pain and um, with family dynamics. So that family dynamic between her mom and her grandmother is interesting. Her father has passed away, which causes a very strenuous relationship between her and her mother so there's this whole conversation about grief and how grief impacts not just us as individuals but how it affects the relationship dynamics that we have with other people and especially when you have a parent that has passed and then the other parent is the only parent left and then there's an only child like what happens with that family dynamic and you can kind of see the impact and how the two kind of deal with each other but I also liked that there was this conversation about following your dreams and not necessarily giving up your dreams and wishes for someone else. And, you know, following your heart and putting you first doesn't mean that you necessarily have to neglect your relationship or that you can't have a relationship, but you have to think about what you want to prioritize and what your future is going to look like, especially as a young teenager and they're not young in this I mean they're in the upper teens but still I think that this is such a great book in the sense that when you're 16 17 18 years old and you have that first like real relationship you know you die hard romantic this is my first love I'm gonna be with this person forever and then life comes at you like oh are you now <laughs> like you still have so much life ahead of you do you want to wrap your life around this one person or do you want to live your life? And if this person fits into your life, then you continue the relationship. And I think that for so many teens out there that are experiencing love for the first time and experiencing love for the first time is something I think that sometimes can be difficult to explain, especially as a teenager, because of course, as adults, we're like, child, you don't know what love is. And for them, it is very, very real. And so they want to wrap their world around this person because this is a person they can't imagine living without. And you have to think about like developmentally, emotionally, that's a lot to take on. But keeping in mind, like there's nothing saying that you can't continue the relationship with the person. But what about the rest of your life that you have to live? What do you want to do? What do you aspire to be? What do you want to accomplish? And I love that this book kind of... Um, kind of address that and that's not saying that you can't risk things for love because there is that conversation too but I love that there were so many moving parts of this that worked well typically I'm the type of person who's like ah there's too much going on like <laughs> but I think in this one it did work rather well I'm just not a hundred percent sold on the k-pop da, da 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 secret like you know uh musician that I it's just is not my thing which it's for plenty of people it didn't make it a bad book but I, I definitely enjoyed this one I gave it four stars okay the next one that I ended up reading was a middle grade historical fiction book and that was Across So Many Seas by Ruth Behar now this is my ooh 
I can't think of how many books I've read by Ruth Bayer. This is my second middle grade book by her. She should have three out. I've read Letters from Cuba. This is my second one and I haven't, I forget the name of the first one. I haven't read that one. But this one is very interesting and this one is closely, <laughs> this one's very personal for me because of my own family history and I'm going to try to keep this as brief as possible because this is one of my favorite books that I've read in the past few weeks and I five stars all around. It follows four generations of women and it starts in 1492 during the Spanish Inquisition where Jews um, were forced to leave and go elsewhere. So you either converted over to Christianity or you were forced to leave your community. And so we are following a uh, main character whose family is basically sent away. Um, they have to leave for their own safety and it journeys or it captures their journey from leaving um, their home to ending up in Turkey and we switch to where we get a different generation and I must say there's a significant time gap and Ruth Behar does explain that because when I first was going through this book I was like why is that time jump so huge because we go from like 1492 to it had to be was it like the ninth, the 1800s or the 1900s? It was a massive time jump. And in my head, I'm thinking it was 1923. Because that's the date that is sticking out to me. It was like 1923. Yeah, we went from like 1492. Then all of a sudden we jumped to like 1923 Turkey. And Turkey was just getting its independence. And we get to know that character. Then that character ends up, for reasons I'm not going to say because it's a spoiler, ends up in Cuba. And then when she ends up in Cuba, it is speeds forward to the 1960s. This is about the time where we're transitioning into um, Fidel Castro getting power. And then it swaps from Cuba to the early 2000s in Miami. And basically, it is tracking the... Um, the uh, immigration patterns of the Sephardic Jewish community. So... This was very personal to me because I, um, my great, 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 I can't believe it's three times over or four times over grandfather on my father's side was um, part of the Shephardic Jewish community and immigrated to Jamaica. And so you have Cuba, Jamaica, there was a lot of immigration to uh, the Caribbean. And so hearing a lot of the information that was going on explains a lot about like my background, um, which I did not know prior to this. And it's lazy on my end because I definitely am an information professional. I could have done research on this and it took me doing this for me to do. I knew about my my great 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 grandfather like that's been family history for a long time but learning more about um just the migration patterns and and learning more about the history this book kind of spurred all of that into a lot of questioning for me about my own personal background on my father's side my mother's side is a little bit more straightforward but my dad's side is a little bit more complicated into like our family history and so seeing a lot of this stuff hearing a lot of the conversations related to the Shephardic Jewish community was very very interesting it was very very interesting um this was very very well done when I say very very well done in terms of like storytelling and the history behind it and the amount of research that Ruth Behar did instantaneously I'm not surprised because she always does a lot of research but it's it was interesting because this book specifically was a love letter to her father's side of the family that is um, part of the Jewish community but has roots in Cuba where her mother's side of the can um, um, of her family it's a Polish Jewish um, uh, family side of the family which is letters from Cuba is about her mother side of the family leaving uh, Poland during World War II and moving to Cuba so I thought that was just very interesting seeing like the two sides of her family because I was just like okay when she originally came out she was writing and she was like yes I'm a Latina I'm, I'm Jewish and like hearing more about her family history I was just very intrigued by it so I got the mother side of her family when I read letters from Cuba but hearing this side of the family story was very personal to me because it also has roots in my own family. So I was just like, oh, okay, like, okay, this, this is all making a lot 
this is all making a lot of sense here um i still feel like i have so much research to do with my own family but i was like oh okay it's like the math started mathing when i read this book about my own personal experiences it's wild it's absolutely wild but i would say that this one does have a couple of content warnings and i'm trying to figure out how to Mm, kind of give you these content warnings without spoiling the book there is an arranged marriage between someone who is in this day and age would be considered a minor but in that time period it she was not considered to be not um not of marriageable age <laughs> like that was not a thing then it is a thing now but back then it was not mm, so there's there's that and I, I don't want to go into too much because it is there. It's a strong plot point um, for the, the story itself. There is also what we see um, some gender bias with who has accessibility to read and write. That's also pretty prevalent. I do like that it does start in Toledo, which I freaking have been to Toledo, Spain. That's why I said this book was so like a aha moment for me because I've been to Toledo Spain which is very much well known for the cohabitation of Christians Jews and Muslims at one time and so to have been there to understand the history to know that my own personal family history is tied to it it just I should be doing better I should be doing a lot better but yes I think that this is definitely um it's Ruth Behar y'all I love Ruth Behar she doesn't fail me ever picture book middle grade whatever it can be I'm ready for her I'm ready for her to come out with her young adult book I don't know if this is everything that she's going to do but she's such a gifted writer she ties so much history into her books and little known pieces of history that you may not necessarily get in you know typical United States secondary education system like you're not gonna get it so it's nice to know that this information is in books five stars easy easy five stars for me easy five stars i also ended up reading which i know this was everybody's favorite book of the year love songs for ricky wow okay so let me tell you right now i did not really i i wasn't i didn't dislike it but i didn't love it seven days in june was everybody's like favorite book oh my god i love seven days in june it's so me i i didn't wasn't a I wasn't a huge fan of seven days in June but love songs for Ricky wow this is what I like this was this was good I think a lot of me enjoyed love songs for Ricky Wilde because of the historical nature of it I will say that this one has a interesting like magical element to it that I don't want to spoil which I'm sure everybody's saying at this point but it is such a strong part of the story that you don't want to spoil it I have some questions about that magical element and how it was used um but I'm <laughs> I'm gonna say that from my written review and put spoiler tags on it but this follows a main character by the name of Ricky Wilde and she's kind of like the misfit of her family she doesn't fit in she has three sisters um they are the black socialites in atlanta the black elite wealthy well-known high status um high class and ricky doesn't really fit in to that whatsoever she's not um she's the black sheep of the family and she's ironically named after her father and she wants to start this this plant company because they're like ricky what are you gonna do with your life um they own this this um it's not a mortuary <laughs> what is it called <laughs> they own a funeral home <laughs> and she doesn't want to do that that's not her thing she wants to own up her own her own floral shop which she's done some things on instagram she's built this strong community but she wants to own a brick and mortar floral shop so she gets the opportunity randomly she connects with this woman who lives in brooklyn and is basically like um, lives in harlem and is basically like come you know come in and and i have this this place that you can use and so it's just kind of the chips fall where they may you know <laughs> now y'all i've been saying love songs a love song for ricky wow goodness gracious so like i said um she gets invited to move to harlem by this older woman and things kind of fall into place of course starting your own type of uh, you know <laughs> shop of anything is going to be hard and she she learns that but there's also another character 
And I don't know how to really describe the love interest without giving too much away. And so I think I'm going to heed from from doing that. I don't want to tell too much about him because I think to talk about him is to give too much of the story away. But I will say what I liked about this is that Tia Williams infused a lot of black history into this book which I appreciated. She delves deep into the Harlem Renaissance and its importance not only just for the black community but for for culture overall, for American culture overall. Some of the biggest names, most recognizable names came from the Harlem Renaissance. These gifted, um, talented, amazing black individuals who just, I mean, blew the scene away during the Harlem Renaissance. And I think the history nerd in me was like, yes, I'm eating this up. I love that aspect of it, which I think a lot of reviewers are not happy with that. But guess what? This is not, I'm gonna say it because I'm gonna say it. I don't think that a love song for Ricky Wilde is as palatable as the other book is. That's just my personal opinion. <laughs> I don't think it is as palatable and I'm okay with that. And that's what I wanted from Tia Williams is I think that this one does a better job of staying true to itself instead of writing itself in a way that is palatable for everyone. And if you can't read in between the lines, I don't know what else to tell you. But I do like the incorporation of black history. This is a faded mates type of situation, not even a type of situation. It is faded mates. Um, and Leap Year plays a big role in this. If you're not into Faded Mates, I don't know if you're like this one because with Faded Mates comes insta-love. That's just how it works. And so their connection is pretty instantaneous. But for me, it was fine. I don't have a problem with that because of the way that Tia Williams kind of handled this. I will say, child, if you ain't gonna love me like this, I don't want your love at all because when I tell you the love that they shared is it's beautiful it is absolutely a beautiful romance story uh the ending is bittersweet um grab your tissues it made me tear up I did not cry cry but it is one that will tug at your heartstrings because it, it's just the nature of the story but it wasn't a five star read for me but it definitely was much better than seven days in June and so I'm gonna go with four and a half on this one all right y'all so the only other things that I read and I don't you know I know some of y'all are interested in in seeing some of this stuff I don't know how interested you may be in it all of you but I did read some beginner readers I do try to keep up with all the beginner readers that have come out or are coming out so I did end up reading Ty's Travel Showtime by Kelly Starling Lyons this is the next in the um Ty Travel series basically it's just about him and his friends having fun playing instruments and how fun it is to play music with other people like literally that's all that one is I ended up giving that one Four stars. I read uh, Rabia's Eid, which is a good time since it is Ramadan right now. Um, it was the first time that I think I have seen a leveled reader or beginner reader that had representation for Ramadan. I think this is the first one I've ever come across, y'all. I, I, I think pretty much it is. It's, it's really... It's really great. I enjoy that one. Uh, that I gave that one four stars. I ended up reading Friends Are Fun by Steve Henry. Um, this was about um, a, cr a creature by the name of Pete who was like, I can't even remember what the heck Pete was. And Pete was a parrot or a turtle. Maybe Pete was a... I can't remember who was who, y'all. I can't remember if Pete was a turtle. Either way, Pete was on an island by himself, okay? And he was enjoying his time by himself until he wasn't, okay? And then everybody's like, hey, can I come hang out with you? Kind of like donkey, can I spend time with you? And it's an elephant, a turtle, a parrot, and um, a dog <laughs> that are all on this island together. And it's cute. It's, it's all about like sharing spaces with friends and, you know, kindness and generosity and how that can come full circle and pay off in the end. It's like all that good jazz. I ended up giving that one four stars. And then I read I Want to Be a Scientist, which I like some of these because they're like nonfiction, but on a more accessible level for younger, more um, 
kids that are learning how to be independent readers. This one really was just about introducing kids to all different types of, of scientists, like meteorologists, zoologists, astronomers. Like it was just really, really cool. So it's like more narrative nonfiction, but definitely giving them that introduction to what it's like um, to be a scientist. And what, if they're interested in being a scientist, look at all the different types of scientists that you can be. I also ended up reading Misty the Cloud, The Thing About Spring which Missy the Cloud is just Missy the Cloud. Like this one is literally about transitioning the spring, which we are currently doing because the pollen is kicking my ass right now. But I liked it. Um, this one is great for younger readers who are interested in conversations that uh, center the changing of the seasons. And I ended up giving that one four stars. So yes, um, whew, that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot. Um, okay, so I was in my last video where I talked about, oh, I'm coming back or like, you know, I took a break, yada, yada, yada. I said I was reading No Time Like Now. I DNF'd it. I couldn't do it. Um, I could not do it. That book was incredibly boring, y'all. I'm so sorry. Um, I may try it physically, but I was listening to an audio and I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I'm still reading The Night of the Storm. I haven't made much progress in that. I still think I'm a little over 100 pages in. I currently have two other audiobooks going, Good Material by Dolly Alderton, which is very interesting literary fiction breakup moment, but from the perspective of the guy, which I haven't read before, so I thought that that was interesting. And then Avril Offline by Amy Noel Parks. Very, very interesting about um, respecting how do I say this? Respecting spaces of children, respecting their privacy. This is this as a parent, this this has been it's been interesting for me. And then also I'm reading uh, Lila Lee's new book, Gigi Shin is not a nerd, which of course is very interesting as well. Um I uh, <laughs> I have a couple books to show you. <laughs> that have come in. Um, I'm not buying books right now at all y'all. I, I just can't afford to right now. It's you know life is lifing. Um, I don't know. I can't find the slips for some of these but there is one lovely human who has sent me a couple of things including um, Symbosis by Nikki Drayden which I read Escaping Exodus a while ago and really loved it. Y'all know. Oh sent me escaping exodus too which i didn't own um room to dream and three keys i loved both of these uh the 1619 project was sent to me um the same lovely why can't i find any of my slips that's weird that I cannot find like literally and I could have sworn my child was helping me clean up yesterday so there's a possibility that they were thrown in the trash can um, the same lovely human also sent me the Priory of the Orange Tree, which this is thick. I've seen so many people read this. This is this is thick. <laughs> um, and also, thank you so much because this one kind of blew my mind away. Um, Amulet, the box set, volumes one through eight, which volume nine just came out. This is such a good middle grade graphic novel series. <laughs> It's so good. Um, I did before, once again, I put myself on a, which I wasn't buying books, but I completely cut book buying out of my budget now, completely. But I did get myself the last two copies of the Ari Shaw series because I am reading it, but no more books shall be bought, y'all. No more books shall be bought. Um, let's see here. And then I don't think I showed these. But Robin got me the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois, which I heard is a hard read. And then Paulo Santiago and the Forest of Nightmares, which I will be reading this sometime this year. And I was sent a finished copy of um, Most Ardently, which is one that I talked about this year already. I read Most Ardently already. So yes, I just want to show you all the, that stuff. Oh, and... No slips, y'all. I promise you I have these slips. I don't know where they are. Someone also sent me Nubia and Almost American Girl, which thank you so much because, oh my gosh, I love her so much. I've read this. I highly, highly recommend this book. I love Almost American Girl. It's one of my favorite graphic memoirs of all time. But all right, y'all, that's it because this video was going to be so 
so ridiculously long. If I didn't talk fast, I needed to talk fast. But anyway, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content from me, click the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. Let me know in the comment box down below what you've been reading lately. What's on your TBR? I know we are almost done with quarter one of the year. I think I'm going to do the best of worst of books of February and March. I know I did it for January, but I'm going to do it for February and March when I get around to it when I finish my spreadsheet and then able to collect some data because I'm so behind. I'm behind on a lot of things. I'm behind on life. But yeah, either way, if you're interested in uh, supporting the channel, Patreon, Amazon, all that stuff is down below. Interested in following me on social media, all those links will be down below in the description box as well. And I'll be back with another video soon. It's in the air like a blazing flare.